guys. Good evening, good morning, good night, wherever you are when you're watching this. This week's sermon is called The Healing Balm of Pain. Um, I've been dealing with a because of where God has taken me, I've been dealing with a lot of past things and issues with myself and the Lord has been taking me through a personal journey of how to deal with my hurt and my pain and I want to share some of that of the um, things that he's been telling me um, with you so this is a sermon of personal experience um, he's been dealing with me a lot about actually going through the pain and not hiding from it see we always like to hide from it and sometimes we say we're we're just leaving it with God but really we're running from it and sometimes we've just got to uh, let the pain be what it is and know that we'll come out the other side. It's like a house. Sometimes we have rooms of the house, like the kitchen and the living room and all that. That is so beautiful and so wonderful. And we love to show people all of, all of those things. But we have our back bedrooms and our closets that we hide stuff in. Um, I don't know if you, you, you guys do this when guests come over to your house, um, but some people I know, um, when they find out guests are coming over, they stuff all, all the mess in their closets away so that people don't see them. And it's, a, and it's not like the mess isn't there, the mess still is there, but it's Hidden, and that's what we do as people. We try to hide our mess and we try to uh, make up our mess and we try to um, we try to disguise our mess with hallelujah, praise the Lord. How are you? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Where, where the Lord just wants us to be real with our pain and say, Lord, I'm hurting. Lord, I really need you. Lord, I Lord, I really want you to you to saturate me and to help me deal with it. I've said it a couple times before in a couple of different videos. God doesn't mind your pain. God doesn't mind your hurt. God doesn't mind your whatever you're going through. And he can help you with it. And he can surround you with people that can help you with it. But if you don't lay it before the Lord, if you don't reveal it, he can't do that. And also, um, don't be afraid to let it hurt. A lot of people, the reason why they use um, things to cover up like drugs or sex or eating or shopping or overspending or whatever is they're afraid of the pain. And God is saying today, let it hurt. Go through your pain. Um, don't be afraid, afraid to take the hot, um, to take the painful road to recovery because at the end of that pain is not fear, it's life. It might be a bit, a bit, you might be a bit afraid going through it, but after you go through it, it's going to be so much better for you and for those around you. And quite often the people around you can see you're going through pain but they don't know how to help you so let them help surround yourself with people who 
can guide you, who can help you, your family, your friends, don't shut people out. Because what the devil loves to use is um, isolation. The devil loves to isolate people. When, when we get in a community, we can be strong, we're stronger together than we are apart. And I think uh, the reason why people are afraid to let it hurt is because they're afraid that they are not going to survive the pain if they actually feel the pain. See, we as humans don't like to feel pain. So, even whether it be emotional pain, whether it be physical pain, we don't like pain. Sometimes pain, though, is necessary for growth. Um, people often grow through their pain. God uses their pain to grow them into better people. You're, you're strong enough to go through your pain. You're strong enough to deal with your struggle. You're strong enough. You're not as weak as you think. You're not that little girl anymore. You're not that little boy anymore. You're a grown woman, a grown man, and you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. So receive what he says about you. And put Quite often we just are, are afraid to, to just lay bare because vulnerability is scary, but it, it's the key to real community, real friendship, real relationship. I was thinking about this the other, other day. Um, I was thinking about um, the difference between sex and intimacy. And I was saying to the Lord, I think it is easier for some people to have sex, uh, the physical act of, of um, uh, human bodies meeting and all that stuff, rather than to be intimate, to let a person really see into you or people see into you. Sometimes people can um, know each other for years and not be intimate with them and not know, not really, they can know all these kind of facts about them, but they're not really intimately acquainted with them. They don't, they've never really seen into them. People can be married and not be intimate with each other. People can make love to each other. Married people can make love to each other and not really see into each other. Intimacy is into me you see. So who have you let into your inner circle? Who have you let, who have you shared your thoughts with? Who have you let see your broken places? And I know it can be scary, especially when you've been hurt before. Believe me, I've been there. But today God is saying, open your heart. Open your heart. Do not be afraid. And the first person you've got to open your heart to is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is more than saying a simple prayer, Lord, I accept you into my life. That is establishing a true intimate relationship with Christ where you let Christ um, in, where you let him tear down your walls and your barriers and see who you really are. A lot of Christians don't really let God see who they are. They, they hide who they really are because they think that um, God won't like them if he really sees who they really are or God will punish them if he really sees who they are but the Lord truly wants to see who you really are wants to stand by your side 
enough with this churchy God that we we put up this far away God, this um, pray twice a day um, God. He wants to walk with you and talk with you and um, be acquainted with all your fears and all your weaknesses. And you could say he already is, but like a good father, he already is, but he wants you to tell him. He wants you to open up the door. And there are so many closed doors in so many hearts and so many Christians. So much pain and so much hurt from molestation and rejection and all these other different things. And he's saying, I want that. I need that. He's saying, I want to be intimate with you. He's saying, I need to be intimate with you. Let me in. He's saying, let me in. And he's saying, don't be afraid of the hurt. Don't be afraid of the pain. I'll be with you. But I need you to understand how much I love you. And a lot of people don't understand how much God really loves them. Like we, we read how much God loves the whole world and how much he, he um, gave for the whole world. He gave his life for the whole world. But what I needed to come to is he loves the whole world, but he loves me. Not as part of that world, but just as me. He loves Rachel. He loves Rachel Esdale. Me. He, he loves all the, per all the person I am. He loves me. And to come to that, when you really understand how much God loves you, it changes your whole life. It changes your world. And I think people really do. We hear about the love of God, but hearing about something and receiving it are two different things. And I think, I know that's what the Lord is saying. He's saying, beloved, receive my, receive my love, receive my care. Because you cannot be intimate with someone that you that you don't know that you've um, that you shut out of your life or compartmentalize. A lot of people um, um, compartmentalize God, and He just wants He just wants your whole life. He just wants you, your everyday thoughts. He just Nine, wants your everyday seven, life. Eight, he just zero, wants everything. Zero, zero. He wants it all. Call from four, one, and he's six, saying, Beloved, three, don't be afraid nine, of pain. Seven. Don't be afraid of hurt. Just give it to me and go through it. Don't be afraid to get angry. Don't be afraid to swear. Don't be afraid to express your emotions how you express them. But just know that on the other side of that, I will be there for you. I love you and receive my love. And he's saying, so let it hurt. He's saying, you'll be all right. And one thing he's doing with me about that too um, is my calling. Um, He's been saying a lot about um he's saying he's been saying a lot about my calling and how I'm worth I'm worth the calling he's given me. And sometimes when God is giving God is taking to us through this process of healing and restoration and, and, um, and dealing with pain. Um, we are just, we feel so unworthy because here's this big God and here we are. And you know the thing is, he knows us inside out. He knows what we struggle with. He doesn't just know the churchy part of us. 
He knows every single part of us. And sometimes we think we're so bad that nobody's going to want to listen to us or nobody's going to want to follow our lead or do, or do what or do what um nobody's gonna respond to what he's putting us and he's saying yes you are you have the tools to do what I've called you to do he's saying you have the tools you have the know-how even if you don't have the money or resources He's saying to, he's saying, don't worry, you have what it takes. He's saying you have the tools, you have the know-how, all you have to do is step out. And he's saying, once I give, he's saying, don't step out until I give you the sing signal, but once I give you the signal, step out. Don't be afraid. And he's saying, I, I'm back to the beginning of my sermon. He's saying, I may need to take you through I may need to take you through pain. I may need to take you through all these obstacles. But you have what it takes. You have what it takes. Of course he knows all your downfalls. He knows that you're not good at this or a little slow at that. But don't worry. He'll provide once you step out on faith. Once he gives you the signal to step out on faith. He'll provide the resources. He has people waiting to fill in the gap. And... He's saying, just move with him. He's saying, when I tell you to slow down, slow down. When I tell you to speed up, speed up. And I've talked a bit about this before, but he's really saying that to me now. Just, I have the ability to, to do not of myself, but through him, I have the ability to do what he's called me to do. And I just have to receive the fact that I have that ability. And I have to know that he's got my back. He's got my back. He won't let me fall. And he's saying that to someone today, too. He's saying, after I take you through all, all this pain, after... You receive my love, and after you receive, you've got the the fact that you've got what I need, that you've got what you need and what I need to fulfill our purpose together. Know that I've got your back, and like I don't know if it was a vision or a dream or whatever, but he showed me uh, a couple standing back to back and he said the man, the, the man said to the woman I got your back and he's saying that to you today he's got your back he loves you so there is nothing you have to be afraid of so go through the pain it's going to be worth it because you know you know, all the things that he's, that you think are disqualifiers are you are things that he's going to use to qualify you to speak to the certain people that you need to speak to. There is a new move of God that has will never be seen has never been seen before, and he needs people that are uncommon people, people that will do the unexpected, people that will preach his word in new ways, um, people that will um, preach the gospel using new techniques. The gospel doesn't change, but the, the techniques do change. 
and the ways that he will do that will change although that the gospel remains the same and he's got uncommon preachers out there he's got preachers in the financial field he's got ministers in the healthcare sector he's got ministers in every sector but all we need to do is arise and take our place because the world is waiting the world is crying for us to arise and take our place to understand that he's got us and there is nothing we can do there is nothing we we can say to stop his purpose when god calls you he calls you you can't run from it you can't do anything about it he just does what he does and all you have to do is receive it and i uh, um i i love the song uh do it again by elevation worship um coming from elevation church um uh head church in in uh north carolina it says um i've seen you move you move the mountains but i believe us and i believe us you do it again i was I was thinking of that song the other day and I was thinking that's a great song, great beat, great lyrics. But I said I don't want to see him do it again. I want to see him exceed himself. I want to see him do more than he's ever done and I'm going to say something here. I said I want to see him do something that will blow our minds. That I I want to see him do something that um all of our we don't have any scripture references for that is totally something new that he's never done in the history of the world that i want to see him do things that we don't have scripture references for i want to see him do something totally that will shock the whole world and you know he who he'll do it through you so that's why he needs uncommon people that's why he needs people that go against the grain of it that's why he needs people that are weird in their in their um preaching that's why he needs people that are a little bit unorthodox in in ministry because he needs people that will do something he wants to do through people something that the world has never seen he wants to do things in the bible he wants to do things that were not even in the bible he wants to do things that are totally like out in left field to us that we've never seen before and he will do that through people and we've got to understand that the reason why he's taking us through the pain and showing us his love and doing all these things is because he's going to use all that we think is wrong with us to minister to people he's going to use that pat pass he's going to use that big mouth He's going to use what people call um filthy mouth or uncommon or unorthodox language for his glory because there is a group of people not everybody there is a group of people that need that will only respond to what you have not everybody will like you but there is a group of people that will only respond to God the way you preach it or the way you say it they won't respond in a church but they'll respond at a gas station they'll respond um 
into, into unorthodox means. And he, I, I really believe that God wants to, to flip this world upside down and he needs uncommon people to do it. He needs people that will come out of their comfort zones and really say, not as a cute song, but really say, God, I'm yours. Do what you will. And mean that. And we need not be afraid of what he's going to do. I, I believe he'll do things in less than 10 years than that years have not seen or eyes have not seen or ears have not heard, we just have to be available. And we just have to understand that the process that we're going through right now is only for a season. And he loves us so much. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this word today. I thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Minister to every, every heart. Go down in into the mirror of every bone thought and do what only you can do. Take over this world like maybe before. Saturate us with, with your grace and your mercy. Saturate us with your presence, God. We need your presence for this day. Like maybe before, in the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, I'll see you later. Bye. I'll sing you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way where there was no way, and I believe I'll see you do it again. See you later, now. see you later, guys. Bye. Until next week.